You've heard it before, less is more. On today's special episode of Homeworthy, we're bringing you some of our favorite small spaces. These six tastemakers showcase how preppy, colorful, and vintage-inspired design can be achieved in small spaces with clever DIY tricks and multifunctional pieces. Enjoy! You're watching Homeworthy, where we believe every home has a story. Like and subscribe for more. Hi Homeworthy, I am Clara. Welcome to my Upper West Side apartment. I am so excited to show you around. I'm Claire Sullivan. We are here in my New York City apartment. I am a content creator and interior designer. I live here with my husband and my two dogs, Puffin and Chowder. Puffin and Chowder are both Shih Tzus. I rescued Puffin about six years ago, and when I got him, he was black and white, and I was like, what am I gonna name this dog? Like, I looked down, and he was just so cute and looking at me like a little Puffin, like he just looked like a Puffin. So he became Puffin because I'm from Maine, and then I wanted a name for Chowder that would kind of go alongside Puffin, so I had my followers take a vote. And I think it was between Moby and Chowder, and we went with Chowder because they selected it. So we got this apartment in 2019. We wanted a place in the Upper West Side that was close to the trains, and we really liked the Lincoln Center neighborhood for obviously like the opera and all of the culture, and it's just super accessible and great restaurants, and we just love the neighborhood. When I first walked into the apartment, the first thing that I saw was the large row of windows that kind of lines the living room area. I had never seen anything like it in New York. And I just knew like from the second we walked in, that this was the place. I didn't even have to look around. It could have been a pit and I would have been like, this is it, this is it. Um, and luckily it wasn't a pit. We had to do a lot of work, but it ended up being, I think just right for us. I used to work for a really high end design firm and it always used to bother me that I'd be seeing all these beautiful things all the time. And I was like, I want that in my apartment, but I can't, that's totally inaccessible. So I kind of started just figuring out ways that I could make my apartment feel luxurious and similar to kind of the really high end designers that you're gonna see um, in Architectural Digest and House Beautiful. So I kind of took it upon myself to start investigating that and coming up with little tips and tricks to create a beautiful home on a budget because I think everyone should have access to a beautiful home that feels just like them, but also has those little luxury touches that makes it feel collected and curated and designed. So here we are in my little entryway, just walking into my apartment. I think an entryway is a really important place to start like your design and start your vibe because it's the first thing you're gonna see when you walk into the apartment. So I like mine to be really colorful and interesting and very me. Um, so here I have a lot of art. There is no shortage of art. And so I love to just like throw stuff on the walls. I kind of carry you in here with this diagonal sort of line through. I have my nautical stuff. Um, I have my Matisse. We love Matisse. Um, and most of my art is thrifted or very cheap, very affordable. I have a little tray where you can put keys. I like to have some kind of floral arrangement or greens when you walk in, just to kind of invite you in, make you feel at home. The bamboo thing was from a flea market in Maine, which there is one flea market in Maine that probably like 50% of my stuff is from. It's the Arundel Flea in Kennebunkport if you ever get up there. So I love rattan, I love bamboo. It's definitely a little bit grandma, but if you pair it with the right things, with bright colors, it's not gonna feel like that kind of 80s rattan, Miami beach house type vibe. Oh, look at him. Jody, stop it. Oh my God, see, look at that. He likes to eat my furniture. He has very good taste. <laughs> So my door, I had a dream one night, and this is so bad, but this is what happens to me. I had a dream that I had a painted door, and I was like, oh, okay, I guess I need a painted door because it was a really good dream. So I decided to paint the door in stripes, and I was kind of debating. I wanted to do a really bright paint color, but then because my space is so small and interconnected, and you can really see everything from everywhere, so you need to make sure that you're pulling in tones that are repeated throughout the space. So I pulled in my bedroom color because it's it's Benjamin Moore Iceberg. So it's a kind of warm blue. It's not really, it kind of looks like a gray out of context. So it's a really subtle tone. Um, and because I was doing a bold stripe, I wanted it to be a little more on the subtle side. And yeah, it was really fun. Um, I ended up carrying it through very impulsively to the trim and then I added this molding from Amazon. It's just stick on. Um, and so I carried it through that way just to add a little bit more color in here and interest. Here we kind of have this open area, definitely not a big space, but it is what I would call a dead space. It's an area where there's not much functional use besides walking. 
and that's why I decided to put this entryway table here. It's a kind of table that you see in like big houses in the entryway, but I thought, you know what, just because my apartment's small doesn't mean I can't have a fabulous entryway table. So I got this table, just it was just some kind of cheap find on Amazon. Um, and then this beautiful tablecloth is by my aunt's company, Mary Marshmallow. And the fun thing about this table is that if you're like me and you have a lot of stuff that you like to decorate and switch up all the time, like I just love arranging stuff, I love kind of switching things around, it's a great place for that. So taking all of your favorite things and kind of putting them on this table, it's a little bit of an organized chaos. I create a little grid of books, um, books that you think are pretty, books that you think are funny. I just think this book is hilarious. I don't understand it. I just think it's ironic because we love women. Um, and I think it's funny. I like little things that make people talk. I like things that are a little more interesting, make people go, what? I think that's a fun way to decorate. My style is eclectic. It's bright. Um, some would say preppy. Um, I don't really know how to describe it. Some people say grand millennial. I use a lot of blues, it's my favorite color, and I love like neutral tones and wickers, natural textures, and also kind of combining that with really bright pops of pink and green and blue and pastel colors. So I think it's really fun and happy and artistic, um, and I just, I like to feel uplifted in my home, not brought down by dark tones, and so yeah, I really like my bright colors. It's always great to put a really big arrangement, so a, a great place for an arrangement that has a lot of height, because there's kind of nothing around it, like it's, you know, it's not obstructing the eye in any way. This area is actually my desk and it's very dressed up right now for you guys. And it's kind of what it looks like when I'm entertaining. So underneath here is just my regular desk where I do my work. If you get a great tablecloth that you love, bring it out when you're entertaining. And it kind of transforms into a serving space or a bar, something like that. Really fun. I just lay out glasses that I love and just create just a little space, like a little vignette. I love vignettes. These were a find, thrifted find, as is like all of my art. This was one of, I think, like two splurges, I would say, in my apartment. Um, custom framing is crazy expensive, but sometimes it can be worth it. This was my first project, and I was so excited about it that I wanted it to be framed and up on my wall um, as kind of like a you did it, good job kind of thing that I can look at every day um, and just be proud of myself. I love bamboo. I love bamboo gold frames. It was Cynthia from Collins Interiors, who I'm obsessed with saying that if you group things together that are similar, it has a much greater impact than spreading them throughout the house. And that stuck with me. And I think I've just been kind of like having that in the back of my head as I've been decorating. So I grouped all of these gold bamboo frames together instead of bringing this somewhere else. And something about it is so impactful and creates like such an impression. And I really love that. So the apartment was built in the 1960s and we found it in 2020. Um, and it took about eight months to renovate. We touched it up. Um, we didn't have to do much besides the kitchen and bath. The rest was mostly just cosmetic. These floors were here. And really what I did was fill it up with myself. I feel like everything in here is just me. I love color. I love layering textures and patterns, but also keeping a lot of brightness and lightness is kind of my style. So it's a little bit of fresh. It's a little bit eclectic. And everything is on a budget. So the only thing I splurged on was my bedding pretty much. So you'll notice like I do a lot of little hacks, a lot of little things that make this feel a lot more luxury, I think, than it really cost. So we are now in my really kind of comfy living room area. My living room is divided into two sections um, because when we moved in, we realized we had this really large horizontal area. So we ended up dividing it into two spaces. One is fully functional. I sit here every night. We were watching The Crown last night. So cozy, um, I love it in here. I think a sectional is really important if you are furnishing your living room or a place that you wanna be reclining and comfy. I love a sectional um, and I love a white sectional, even though we have dogs, I don't really care. It's filthy, don't look too close. <laughs> well, if we were to have a dinner party, which we do and we actually do this, this becomes our dining room table. So just like the desk is kind of multifunctional, again, this is small space living here. We pull the tablecloth off, that's our desk. We pull the tablecloth off or, and take the stuff off and it becomes our dining table. And then we have these kind of occasional chairs that are really dining, dining chairs. And we have two more that we tuck away in our closet. They're great because they're actually comfortable. I think they're very attractive. They are dining chairs. I think it's important when you're living in a small space to choose furniture that can be really multifunctional. Funny story on the window treatments, they're actually my first major mess up. Um, probably my first like design experience that was really a learning lesson. As you can see, they are not sized right. Um, so it was one of my first times like taking real measurements for something to be custom made and 
I just completely messed it up. I don't know what I did, but basically the fabric is hand block printed in India. It's beautiful fabric. Um, it's from my aunt's line, Mary Marshmallow, and she had some surplus fabric that I was like, I'm taking this. So I kind of kidnapped the fabric from Florida and had it custom made into these Roman shades. Um, and I love them. Because this area is so expansive and big, I wanted something that was gonna feel like a moment. I wanted it to feel like artwork. I did not want just like white curtains that was gonna wash this area out because it's, we don't have a lot of wall space in this area because of the window. So you want something really interesting and beautiful to look at. So the Roman shades, um, they pull down at night and they create these beautiful panels that to me, it's almost like art. Because they're sheer, that wasn't an issue. They're, it's fine to be sheer, but I did want the privacy of them. So the Roman shade is a really good option and they're really easy to bring up and down. I would say if it's one of your first custom fabric projects, I think this is a good way to go. I think everyone should have them. They're just so pretty and easy. And this area is, I like to think of it more of a conversation area. Um, if I have friends over, because of the setup of the room, it's really easy to sit and talk and chat and like have appetizers, have drinks. My husband and I sit here and catch up like when he comes home from work. If we're going out, we'll have a cocktail here before together. And I just love a room that's kind of set up for conversation versus entertainment and watching TV because it's not something that you find a lot anymore. Usually rooms are especially living rooms, are designed around the TV. And so I wanted a space that was going to be designed around conversation and connection. My pink couch has been in my family for years. I think my mom got it probably in the 90s. It was this brand called Main Cottage Furniture. She came to college parties with me. She came to the East Village with me. She came Upper East Side with me. I mean, she's been everywhere. I love her so much and I'm telling you she's so comfortable like they don't make couches that are this comfortable anymore. It's also really hard to find a bench seat um, so it makes for a really good place for guests to just crash on. This My brother slept on this couch so many times at our old apartment. Um, yeah and so basically when I was thinking about this space I knew the pink couch could not go. I will never get rid of her. So I started pulling colors from the pink couch with the pillows. This is my little pillow line and just pulling in really fun colors and then kind of trying to connect it with the blue that's found throughout the rest of the space. So tying in blues and pinks and then kind of capping it off with little punches of green. So this is my needlepoint pillow. It says, been shopping for years and still have nothing to wear, which is just like me. I just love like old school needlepoint pillows. I feel like they just, they say so much about you. This wall has been like the odyssey and I am Odysseus. Um, it is just the never ending journey. It started as a beautiful white wall and then I put wallpaper up and then I couldn't stand the wallpaper and then I painted it green and then I couldn't stand the green and I settled on this. And this is our final thing. We are not changing it. One, I promised my husband I'm never changing it again because he's fed up with me, but also because I like it. I think it looks really good. I ended up doing a, a horizontal stripe. I wanted to emphasize the horizontal nature of the room and kind of make it appear more expansive because our wall of windows is so long this way. This area was feeling a little bit cramped and I wanted to find a way that would kind of stretch it out and make it feel, make it appear visually bigger. Um, so yeah, we, we ended up using a ton of painter's tape, rolls and rolls and rolls and rolls. Um, and it was very painstaking. I'm not gonna say this was easy, but I will say it was worth it. And it kind of packs a punch. Feels a little bit like wallpaper, but a little bit like something else. And I think, it ties the apartment together really well with all the different tones of blue. Now let me show you my living room. Uh, I've mentioned this prior, but I think that rooms should have multiple uses uh, based on how you want to live. So when I was laying out this space, one of the first things I did architecturally was move a lot of stuff. So the door to the back part of the apartment used to be where that painting is. I sealed that up and moved it to the center of the room. I thought it really divided the room into different zones. Uh, this wall also pulled forward, which not only created a nice opening from the foyer, but gave me a niche for a bar, which we've talked a little bit about before and I'll tell you more about. But as you come in the room, one of the most important things to me was to actually have a peaceful place to do some work. I don't generally work from home. I'm at the office all the time. So if I was going to sit here, I wanted it to be a perfect little moment for me. So just some fun little tricks. Uh, I put an outlet up here so that when I'm charging things, you don't see cords everywhere. Uh, I made the piece of furniture look more like a console than a desk so that it feels kind of nice and formal when I'm entertaining, uh, not necessarily like a home office in the middle of the living room. 
But I also hung one of my favorite pieces of art uh, right above it. So it's actually the first thing I see when I leave my bedroom. So this is a very special moment for me. One other funny thing, um, you know, I keep saying I'm not so nostalgic about things, but I keep telling these nostalgic stories. Uh, this is one of my favorite fabrics. Uh, it's from Hermes. They used to sell fabric by the yard through different, um, different showrooms, and they stopped doing that. So I can't get this fabric anymore. And it was the Roman shade in my old apartment bedroom. It was funny. I wasn't super attached to anything in that apartment, but I made sure that the Roman shade was excluded from the cell. Uh, so I could use it again. So this is now my desk chair and one of my favorite fabrics. So once you walk past my desk area, you come into the seating area. So this serves a couple of functions, right? It uh, has sort of well-rounded out space where you can pull chairs over from different areas if you want to have a more circular uh, conversation moment. Uh, but I also oriented it not just as a nice view when you walk in the space. I love TV, I'm sorry. So I hung a TV on the wall. Uh, I did it in a way where it wasn't so obvious when you walked in, but also I can sit here, I can lay here. Um, I can also sit in that chair and enjoy the view of the park. So this sort of seemingly obvious layout for a furniture arrangement serves a lot of different purposes. Um, my favorite thing in this space ah, would be this pair of lamps I got at auction. I've always loved these Giacometti forms. Uh, I was lucky enough to find a great pair of these table lamps at auction. So those are two of my newer acquisitions. Uh, and then if you follow me over here, you'll see where I have my dining area. So, you know, I think if I'm going to have a large dinner party, I'm probably not going to do it in this apartment. So I really just wanted it to feel nice for about four people max. Um, I love the material and the forms of these chairs and this table. I think that they have a bit of formality and tradition to them without feeling too fussy. Um, and this little corner is really beautiful. I hung a hand-painted screen that I've had for a while and I wanted to treat it a bit more as artwork uh, in this apartment than I had prior where it was actually treated like a screen on the floor. Uh, and this is my painting bar, which I mentioned before. So this was a fun little space. So this was created by pulling the wall out for the powder room. And I actually got a lot of excess hidden storage, which I encourage people to try and find when they're doing renovations. It's a great place to put things that you want to have access to, but don't necessarily want to see all the time. Uh, and I do these sort of hidden moments all the time. Like all of my little painting materials are hidden in my little tabletop easel, you know, mixed in over here with some other display pieces. But this also just becomes a good little art catch-all for me. Uh, that's a piece that I just bought that I haven't hung yet. Um, yeah, this is one of my favorite moments in the apartment. So funny story about this painting. Um, when I take on a hobby, I go all in. So this was um, a Hudson River painting that I had bought and the colors were just feeling a little sad to me one night. There were also some people in the foreground that I couldn't quite identify who they were, or what they were doing. So one night I had the instinct to just sort of Bennett by it. So I painted over what had been there before and just made it a little bit, I would say happier. I think other people would call it moodier, but they're more jewel tone colors. So I did paint this, but over someone else's work. A challenge with pre-war apartments, uh, oftentimes, not always, is a lack of uh, architectural lighting. So what I did throughout the apartment in many spaces was drop the ceiling just a little bit. And I bought these really cool um, sort of two inch deep uh, recess lights. Um, they're from a company called Element. I'm sure a lot of other places make them. But I didn't want to do anything to the ceiling in this space because original to the apartment uh, are these great beams with these sort of uh, plaster curved molding details. So here I added wall lighting. Uh, another part of the story is I have an affinity for two things. I love table lamps and I love uh, occasional chairs and I had too many of both of those. So in this apartment, I made a concerted effort to not have too many lamps. I think you only see two in the whole apartment and the rest is all hardwired lighting. I love rugs. I love carpets. Uh, and I'm also pretty loyal to a lot of the vendors I work with. I think that loyalty comes from just believing in them and what they do. So I do a lot of work with Edward Fields Taiping. Uh, most of the rugs in my projects come from there. But when I was sourcing for my own apartment, I had a meeting with Beth, 
who uh, works with me still. She's not a salesperson anymore, but she still works with me, which I'm grateful for. And we were looking at unique rugs that I had never seen before. And this was an archival Edward Fields um, pattern that they were just reintroducing. I think someone else had revived it. And when I saw it, I was like, wow, that is just the most beautiful thing ever. It looks like a silk field in the wild. Um, and it's a mix of different silk tufts and wool tufts. Uh, it goes from pretty low to pretty high, and I custom colored it to match what I wanted uh, going on in the room color-wise. So welcome to the kitchenette area. Here I have a banquette that is very specific to the size of this space. So I sourced it from Wayfair, it's very affordable, but it didn't come with cushions. So I actually bought Kelly Wurstler fabric and my grandmother sewed it into these custom cushions that fit perfectly. And this is a great way to save space and also hide some storage. So these open up, I'm able to store um, well, that's part of my vacuum. Um, in the other one, I store some of my table wares and then the chairs I can kind of just push in. So great space to eat. I'm a big proponent of sitting down for dinner as many nights of the week as, as I can. And as you can see here, we have some more art, of course, two other prints, this little display shelf for some knickknacks and vases, mirror that I've had I think in almost all of my apartments from anthropology, I feel like a lot of people have this mirror, but it's just, it's stunning and it really plays off nicely um, with this gilded um, chandelier. And actually what's so cool about this is all of these glass rods are individual pieces. And so when setting it up, I had to put each one in individually, but I love how the light is able to bounce off of the glass and it also mutes it and I have it on a dimmer. So when we're eating dinner, I can make it a little bit more moody and light the candles. And something else that I love about my table here is this custom embroidered runner from um, this woman in France and she does all these different table linens. We have some grapes, a baguette, a wine glass, and I just think it's really fun and funky. And then I have a tulipier, I believe I said that correctly. And because it's spring, I decided to pull it out and get some tulips for you. And they haven't come to full bloom yet, but such a cool display piece. And again, I love putting flowers in my space. And I was so happy to find this on Etsy in this sort of delft wear style. So a nod to Amsterdam and spring with the tulips there. And then in this bowl over here, I have some fake fruit from John Darian one of my favorite uh, designers and stores and that just sort of like lives there and everyone, you know, asks me, is it real? What is it? Elements from John Darien that um, are a bit of a mystery as to whether they're real or not. So he also does candles. And so I have a little, little cheese, little uh, beer mug, um, champagne bottle, oil canister they're all candles and like i said and like you've seen i love collecting knickknacks and so having another shelf was an opportunity for me to display more of my barware and another fun and and very cheap affordable solution for displaying some of your glassware is doing these racks and basically they can just screw in and then it also helps keep your glasses from getting dusty because you're hanging them upside down. And so you can just very easily pull them out and then pour yourself a glass of wine. <laughs> the top part had doors on it and I believe this part did too. And so I knew I was gonna have some more things to display and therefore needed the space to do so and was debating whether or not I wanted to make this a bookshelf or whatever, but Obviously it works being in the kitchen to have um, more glassware here. And then we ended up painting this as well to make it look like it's almost a freestanding piece of furniture rather than a built-in. And I chose this grayish blue color um, that I've always loved. And yeah, it creates um, creates a cool effect here and breaks, breaks it up from all the white walls. So one of my favorite things that I've ever purchased is this Burlwood drop-down desk that I actually used to use as a desk in my studio apartment. So this piece here comes down and now houses my printer. 
Um, but now it's where I can keep my cookbooks, some wine bottles and, you know, other miscellaneous things in the cabinet. And then coming into the kitchen here, um, it's a rental, but there was something that I didn't love about the dark wood cabinets. And so I did want to paint them white to make the space feel bigger because it's obviously quite small. And then we added on some brass hardware and I did redo the backsplash with this um, brown and white tile. And then there's obviously this really pretty variations within the marble as well to sort of pick up on the countertops, which I was not going to invest in redoing at this stage. Um, but it plays off of the floors. I didn't want to do something ultra modern, so it still keeps with the mid-century vibe. Um, but it does make the kitchen feel a lot brighter and definitely more my style and personality. Um, and something else kind of funky is because, you know, in New York, there's always a lack of storage. I had nowhere to hide my Swiffers and my brooms. And so I built this with a rod from Home Depot and a shower curtain. And you would never know. I have cleaning supplies back here. Another little fun detail, there's two of these in the apartment that I found out that I could change were these light switch covers. And so this one is from John Darian. It's a little shelf and just add some quirkiness and more artistic elements to the space. And this piece actually also vintage and this houses some melamine glassware, which is really great because this building has a roof. And so if we want to take drinks up to the roof, I never want to bring actual glass. And so these are super durable and this is just fun and easy. And because it's lucite and see-through, um, it doesn't feel so cumbersome in the space. So then over on this half kind of living bedroom area, um, the archway, I didn't really want, like I said, I kind of like to blur the space a little bit. So I kind of didn't want to draw too much attention to it. So the sisal rug kind of grounds the space and adds a little bit of texture. Then the sofa was kind of the first jumping off point. I had a different sofa that I had slip covered and ready to go that I was afraid was too long for here. So I ended up with this love seat, but it actually works really nicely for the scale and of the space. So as you can see, there is a lot of needlepoint throw pillows and on the walls and stand ups and everything. Um, I do a lot of needlepoint. I love it. It's such a relaxing while creative hobby. Um, it's something my my grandmother was a, a big needlepointer and everyone else in my family, we've kind of all got the bug and and stitch but it's been such a fun thing and such a passion i've met so many great people through it that i ended up during um, about 2020 started my own painting my own canvas line which has been a fun kind of additional creative outlet and I, i've always painted things for myself so it's fun to get to share those and see other people stitch them and what their take is um, and get to sh kind of share it with the world this is one of mine, the disposable income. I wish I had more of it, um, but it all goes to Needlepoint. Um, people love this one. <laughs> um, it was a canvas. I found a vintage canvas that was all like true color. And I just kind of had fun and started picking colors, kind of Andy Warhol style and kind of just went to town on it. So the mirror I found in Northern Michigan antiquing um, and I added the little gold tassels. They were from Samuel and Sons and I just painted them gold and added it just for a little extra something because why not? And so I definitely, again, the gallery walls over there. So wanted this to be a little bit more clean. Um, so did the brackets and these are all different collected pieces, whether, you know, vintage store finds, the birds were my grandmother's, um, things from Chinatown. So just kind of a mix of things. The brackets are both a mix of found ones I, I painted that Kelly green or the acrylic kind of for that like a little bit cooler twist so it didn't feel so stodgy so just a very classic kind of traditional thing but with a little bit of a twist the sconces I added just there isn't overhead lighting over here so it's nice to have additional light over here the reading lamp um, again for needle pointing of very play on needle pointing uh, lights kind of throughout so these are plates there. Um, my grandmother collected them. Wedgwood did every year a different Cincinnati scene by the artist Caroline Williams. And she collected them over the years and 
our family always uses them for special occasions and things. And so I have some of them here. Just a nice kind of thought of home without being too, you know, too kitschy. But I, and I love the, the white against the blue, I think is a really nice statement. And I also, um, kind of funny to have it over my bed, but I do have been known to snack in bed. So it kind of works. I consider myself a collector. I think it probably verges on hoarder. Um, but I think hoarder, like it's good things, right? There's not, <laughs> there's not trash. There's not, anyway. Um, yes, so there's lots of things, but I, I think the key to having lots is everything being very like crisp and in its spot. Um, I think, you know, if everything was kind of all over the place, which I, you know, behind me, it clearly is all over the place, but everything has its spot and is ordered in my head that it, it makes sense. So over here, side table that it was a natural rattan, I painted it white. Most all of the rattan, unless it's the natural still, has been painted 12 different colors. Um, but this was, um, this. it's by a friend of mine named Laura. She uh, has a company called Papier Fleurs and she makes these geranium paper flowers. And I fell in love when I first saw them. And it's so great. I love to have fresh flowers around the apartment and plants and things, but I do travel a good amount. So it is nice no matter what to walk in and have some sort of lifelike thing. And it's fake flowers without being like the typical, you know, plastic flowers that we all don't necessarily love. Um, so it's kind of a little bit more of an art piece. Um, and then beneath it, I don't know if you can see, but there's a, a tree trunk that I just got at Martha Stewart's tag sale. Um, it's painted white and it's, it's great. I've been using it for books, but um, I always like to, before I put a book on a shelf or a piece of clothing away, I like to wear it or read it or whatever. So that kind of has given me a spot to the books to read. So I love coffee table books, love getting inspiration from them and such like a treasure trove of um, just inspiration to the world. And so I find I'm always collecting, always finding new ones. And I was at the Met a couple weeks ago and I find you can't go to the Met without shopping in the gift shop. And so as I'm like walking back with three coffee table books to my apartment, I was like, oh, this is going to be a nightmare to move out of here someday. But um, I don't know. It's such a, there's such a great, you can find so many different ideas or even, you know, how to take things in a different way. So these are the Billy bookshelves again. Um, again, stuffed full of stuff, but kind of a mix of clothing and books. These are a lot of my Lily Pulitzer shorts. Um, I worked there for seven years, but I've loved the brand for the longest time and love wearing them. Uh, my my plan when I worked there was until I got 365 pairs, I wouldn't stop buying. So I was like, this is like a usable amount that if I am wearing them, it's probably a little bit too much for Manhattan, maybe better suited for South Florida, but here we are. I always wore Lily Pulitzer, you know, for the longest time. I think this is the first pair I bought and it was for uh, my high school graduation party that I bought with my own money. And it's um, I love they all the prints have different like fun names and they have Lily hidden somewhere. So this one was called R because of the pirate swords, but it's like the cocktail um, swords, which I just I think are so fun. And so I love still getting to wear these um, and from then and then obviously have bought a lot more since. But um, these ones are, are special for that. So I really, yeah, tried to really, you know, keep them folded nicely and kind of the same idea of books that, you know, it visually kind of reads the same and makes it kind of like a shoppable, shoppable kind of thing without having to pay money again. Um, but yeah, I have that, I have shoes down there kind of shoved in. And then with the books, I really try to sometimes sort by color. In this case, didn't. Um, some are more by size, some are you know, different, but I really try to keep by subject matter. So here's New York ones and novels. These are all of my Carlton Varney books, different design books. So try to at least with within a theme, which also makes it easier to find and reference. But I will say, try to keep some things very streamlined and clean and kind of keep the, the big impacts of colors, you know, plugged in here and pillows, whatever, that it is kind of still contained maybe a little bit as best as it can be. It's funny because when I first started on this apartment, I was like, I'm gonna go a little more subdued in this one and go with more of the blues and greens, um, which I definitely is the predominant thing. But then when you add in accessories and, and pillows and artwork, it kind of 
went all over the place color. <laughs> so here we are in the bedroom. I always think a bed canopy adds so much and it just feels special getting into bed, waking up. And so this is one, I actually made it just, um, I, I wanted to make something happen. And so I kind of pulled it together with my sewing machine and hot glue gun. Um, so it's PVC piping to kind of make the frame and then sewed the panels and then the valance is Velcroed on. So it's from the underside isn't the best looking, but from the front, it really kind of, I think has a nice impact and feels very special. These sconces are actually, um, I want to say I got, I redid my, my bedroom for at home for my 12th birthday and got crown molding. And, but so those were a present for, for that birthday back in middle school and they think they're PVT and I've brought them just about everywhere I've lived, but they are so good for reading or needle pointing in bed. And I love that it kind of has that play of they're a little bit more industrial um, against the more streamlined kind of pretty. So we are gonna go over to my kitchen, which is actually what you see when you first walk in. I know it's a little weird. That's life in New York apartments. Um, I added this island here, which is great for entertaining. I love to just kind of set out food and drinks here when friends come over. Um, could all use more counter space in a New York apartment. So this definitely does double as that as well if I'm cooking or baking. So I am a big glassware collector. I love, love, love buying glassware when I'm out vintage shopping. And I found this little, storage piece, which is actually so great. The doors slide back like this. Um, and so it can actually hold a lot of my great glassware. I love, these are Ferron that I love. These I just found on Instagram via a little store that popped up on my feed. Um, I love these for summer. So great for kind of any type of drink you like, you know, you wanna whip up. I do little margaritas in these um, and then they just get tucked away in here. So this is my bedroom and it was also just kind of a blank white box that I jazzed up with some paint. This is the color grayish from Claire Paint, which I love. I also have Claire Paint in my living room. And then because I wanted to do something kind of out of the box and grand, I opted to have molding installed. This molding is actually made out of styrofoam, believe it or not. And it came from Amazon. I had a lovely task rabbit come and help me install it. He did a great job. I just ordered literally everything on Amazon Prime and it was done in a day. So that was amazing. I also ordered this light fixture from Target for over my bed. And I added a little French looking medallion also from Amazon. Thank you to the same task rabbit who did both of those projects for me. Um, and yeah, I honestly feel like it makes such a big difference. I cannot believe that I lived in this room with just plain white walls and no molding for as long as I did. Um, but I love it. I'm never gonna take it down. So because you can never have too many mantles, I have another one. This came with me from my apartment in DC up here and I love it. I feel like this wall maybe originally did have a mantle cause it's kind of jutting out like this, but it was probably not a beautiful one like this. So this makes me very happy. I have a little lamp from Ballard Designs. I also am a big candle fanatic, so I have all of my little candles. Um, I love using vintage ashtrays to hold my candles, so they just go right in, I love that. And more bodega flowers. And then over here I have, you know, just another little piece of abstract art, some favorite books, kind of for a vintage feel. Um, but because we are in 2022, I have my TV. And so this is my Samsung frame TV. It used to be in my living room, but I moved it in here because watching TV in bed is the best. And it's already kind of camouflaged the way it is. That's how this TV is made. But I added a little bit more art to kind of just set up a gallery wall in here. And I love looking at that while I'm in bed. And even when the TV is off, I think it's pretty to have just kind of a fun background up as well. Oh my gosh, I am a big perfume girl. So. I honestly do wear a lot of these. I promise it's not like for the aesthetic, um, but they do look nice grouped together. Even when I'm working from home alone, I kind of put perfume on. I don't know why, I feel like it just makes me feel more together and ready for the day. I think it kind of has something to do with my love of candles. I just, I love every scent and I love to have them all around. I just really wanted this to feel like a calm space. Um, because I work from home all day, I definitely do come in here during the day, but. I like to kind of keep my bedroom just very, you know, zen. And I, I really like the blue walls. Um, and, I, you know, I kind of just wanted it to feel a little less loud than my living room, even though I wouldn't say my living room is that loud, but I've really kept the colors to kind of 
grays, blacks, blues, greens, you know, just a little more subdued than in the living room. So I love quirky accents um, and I found this little plaque that says do not disturb resting at the Hillwood Museum in Washington DC, which is where I used to live. The museum was right in my neighborhood and I couldn't resist it because I love a good nap. So I had the plaque professionally framed and it lives right here on my nightstand. These are little New York City prints that I got at a flea market on the Upper West Side called the Grand Bazaar. It is open every Sunday, rain or shine, year round, so you can't miss it. It is such a fun resource for vintage finds. These pieces actually came from a book um, about New York and they were just illustrations in the book and I just popped them into frames I ordered on Amazon. I love it. The individual pieces were 10 to $15 each, so definitely a great deal. I knew I wanted a large ornate mirror over the mantle just to evoke that kind of Brooklyn, Parisian, whatever townhouse situation with the fireplace. I could not find one that was kind of more unique. There's a lot of stores that now kind of sell these large ornate mirrors and I liked them, but I wanted something a little bigger and a little more kind of just off the beaten path. And so I found this on Facebook Marketplace, but it was out in Long Island. And so I had a task rabbit, love my task rabbits, go and pick one of, or pick this up for me, which was so nice. And then we just hung it and it looks great. And it really makes this room feel a lot bigger as well. So these vintage Dior suitcases, oh my goodness. I go to the Chelsea Flea on the weekends as much as I can. It's a great flea market. Um, I found the large one there in December, just had to take it home with me. I am not 100% sure if it's real, but the, the seller was pretty adamant and it, it looks pretty real to me. And then I found a similar smaller one online on the Real Real, and they're honestly great storage. I can fit so much just kind of random stuff in there, which, you know, I love a stylish storage situation. I probably will never use them for travel, but I'm all about the aesthetic. Now we're in my living area. Um, I would say the focal points here are, is this coffee table, which is actually a hand-me-down from my friend's grandmother. My friend's grandmother gave it to her. She was moving and didn't have room for it. So I took it. Um, I believe it's from the 60s or 70s. It's like not quite the vibe, I feel like, of the rest of my apartment. It's a little like, it's a little more mid-century than the rest of my apartment, but I love the gold. I love the glass. I feel like it's big without feeling like it takes up too much space. Um, and then this couch, which actually is also a hand-me-down from my best friend and her husband who live upstairs, and they got a new couch, so we did a little couch switcheroo. My couch left and their couch came downstairs, um, but I love it. I feel like, I mean, it fits the vibe of the place perfectly, so I was very lucky to have that handed down. That piece of art I actually found on Facebook Marketplace. I knew I wanted something big above the couch, and I really, when I was like looking at the colors for this space, it all kind of came down to this rug. And I was trying to just pull from the different colors in the rug. So you have the pink on the walls, the gray, um, the blues, those are on the couch and the chair. And I saw this piece of art on Facebook Marketplace. I was like, that's like if my rug was a painting. Um, and it was only $60 and normally big art can be quite expensive. And I also liked that the paint is like kind of coming, it's three dimensional. I think it added some nice like texture to the space. Um, and I love it, even though I do think it's got kind of like an 80s vibe. I have some friends who have said like, oh, my parents had something like that in the 80s or in the 90s. But you know what? I like, you know, bringing different time periods into my abode. Um, and then these pictures actually I got at Portobello Market in London, which is like one of the best antique vintage markets in the world, I would say. Um, I just thought they were pretty. And then over here is my bookshelf. And the real standout portion here is my Royal Mug collection. This is my pride and joy. It's been building up for about 10 years. Um, and I have them going all the way back to Queen Victoria. This is the Queen Victoria one. It's my favorite. It's for her Diamond Jubilee in 1897. Um, so very <laughs> fragile. I'm very protective of it. But I mean, it just like really speaks to the history. It says the empire on which the sun never sets. So obviously very dated, but I kind of love it. I mean, it's like living, not living, but it's like a piece of history right in my apartment. You can get them for like 15, 20 pounds. They're not like too hard to find. I wouldn't say you find Queen Victoria ones every day, but you can find other ones, like especially from like the early years of the Queen's reign, you can find those pretty easily. But the other one I feel like is really special is this is from King Edward VIII, who is, um, if any fans of the crown know, he is the Queen's uncle who abdicated the throne after less than a year and he never was actually king and he never had a coronation. So this is a mug for an event that never happened. 
So I have them for every monarch, yeah, going back to Queen, of, Queen Victoria, including him, which I'm very impressed by. And then also um, every like modern royal occasion, including one for King Charles's coronation, <laughs> which I already ordered. I saw it was available and I was like, boom, done. Um, and you do have to pay a little bit of a shipping fee to get it from the UK, but you know, worth it. This is like what I collect, so I think it's fine to, to invest in. Yes, I love that one. That was actually a gift from a friend. And so I do feel like this stuff just like shows up in my home. Like this little corgi down here was a gift and you know, people just, they know I like it, so. And to speak also to my love of other royal families, this is a little statue of Sisi, the Empress of Austria from the late 1800s. I spent about a month in Vienna at the end of last year. Uh, so I picked that up while I was there. Those are from Hill House and they're just so fun and I wore them on my 30th birthday. So it felt like it was just, they were too cute and too fun to like keep them tucked away um, in the closet. And I needed something to, you know, go with the corgi. Another fun thing I have down here is my Playbill collection. I have been saving every Playbill from every show I've seen since I was 12 and I'm a huge Broadway fan so that's a lot of shows. Down here are just the ones I've had since I moved to the city, but it's still nine years worth of playbills. So it's quite a few. My favorite one is actually this one. It's from my favorite show, The Phantom of the Opera. And I got to see it on the returning night on Broadway post COVID. So it has this special little gold seal. Um, so definitely something I will cherish forever. This is my gallery wall. Like any true millennial, I'm a lover of a gallery wall. I've had one in every apartment I've lived in in New York, including this one. Obviously the center here is the frame TV. I feel like most people are familiar with it at one point, um, at this point, but I love it. And I think it just like, A, it's, it's A, the number one thing I get compliments on, I feel like. People are just like, well, that TV, what is it? Um, and the picture I actually have on it is a photo I took when I was in Positano. And throughout the gallery wall, I have some other of my photographs from various travels. This is from London in Notting Hill. That's from Cornwall in England. That little one up there is from Anansi in France, Charleston, and then Bondi Beach in Sydney. And then the rest are just like a mix. The map of London I got when I was studying abroad in 2013. The little butterfly I got on the street in Soho. This is another one of my grandma's paintings. And that is actually just a wallpaper sample from when I was testing wallpapers for my bedroom. I was like, I got, I probably got 40 of them. So I was like, I'll just save one and frame it. Um, and then this is a little extension of my Royal Mug collection. These are some of my favorites. I have William and Kate's wedding, which is really like the mug that started it all. Charles and Diana's wedding. And then that one's for the Platinum Jubilee. And then this is my most recent edition. Um, the Buckingham Palace gift shop just came out with this in like honor of the queen's life. So it's a pretty one. And I feel like the ones that the like actual gift shop makes always look a little bit nicer. <laughs> the blue chair is honestly like doesn't have the most incredible story. It's just from Target, but Target has good home stuff. And I had four and a half months from when I offered on this place to when I closed. So I spent a lot of time like looking online for different furniture pieces and thinking about how I was gonna dine this apartment. And this chair just kept coming up. I knew I wanted to have some additional seating. And then the blanket on is actually from Morocco and my friends got it as a gift for me as a thank you for watching their cat while they were out of town. And here we have the dining area, sort of the last of the three portions of my like great room or main room or whatever you wanna call it. I would say the focal point of this is the dining table. With each of the three little mini spaces, I tried to have like a darker piece that would kind of like anchor it. So here it's the table, in the living room it's the couch, in the office it's the desk. Um, and I thought this just gave me like a French bistro kind of vibe. I like the cane. It's obviously very trendy right now, but you know, I, I can appreciate a trend. Um, and then this vase I actually just got when I was in Cornwall in England in 2019. And it was a little tough to put in a carry-on suitcase home, but I made it work. Um, and it's really nice, obviously, in New York to have a full-size dining table. Um, I live alone, so I wouldn't say it's full constantly, but it's nice to have the option. Um, and definitely, you know, better than just like a little bistro table. On this bookshelf is just sort of coffee table books and other little knickknacks. One of my favorite things I have on here is this bust of Matthew McBadden, who's an actor um, who played Mr. Darcy in the 2005 adaptation of Pride and Prejudice. I got this at the Chatsworth gift shop, which is a house that they used as Pemberley in the movie. When I saw it, I was like, I have to have it. Um, again, taking that home from England was not the easiest, but I did it. Um, you also might recognize him from Succession. He plays Tom Wamsgams. Um, so it's always funny when people come and they see that and they're like, is that who I think it is? 
Um, but such a fun little, I don't know, touch. And like, if you don't know, if you know, you know, I feel like. And then up here, I actually have another little royal. This is for um, Queen Elizabeth and Prince Philip's 70th anniversary. And it's a little like pillbox, but just cute. I kind of feel like I've always had it. I like joke and say I didn't outgrow my princess phase as a kid. Um, but then I went to London for the first time when I was 13 and we went to Windsor Castle and Hampton Court. And I feel like that's really like what spurred it. And then William and Kate's wedding like set it into overdrive. And it kind of like hasn't really calmed down since. And it's definitely like a big part of my personality and everybody like wants to talk to me about it. and. I don't know, people say like in this apartment, it's like I like threw up all over it because it's like <laughs> just, you know, royal stuff everywhere. But I don't know, I think it's like good that your home feels like you. Thanks for watching. For more homeworthy content, be sure to like and subscribe.